So somebody um, got in touch with me uh, on YouTube and they'd said they'd lost their salvation, you know, they'd done uh, Hebrews 10 and despised the grace of Christ and all this stuff. And I wrote this kind of lengthy message trying to kind of encourage them and stuff. And he just said, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, okay. And I said, well, why are you written? What are you? <clears throat> and he said, I don't know why. I just felt like it. And it really, I really felt something. I felt here is this. This is this is somebody who's just confused, and um, they've put themselves in a, they've tied themselves up in knots. Problem with YouTube is you start these dialogues, especially now, and like then you can't, they just disappear, and you can't find the person again, and you can't answer them, and all that. It's it's just like it's something to do with their algorithm or something. But um, so I couldn't finish the conversation. But the point is that I've had, I, I was once in a church. I was kind of serving in a minor capacity in this church and I was sat near the front and I just looked across and there was this, kind of middle-aged woman, very kind of burdened, careworn, I think's the word. And I just felt that she, th I just felt in my spirit, she thinks God's abandoned her. It just came to my spirit. And I just left it at that. Well, after the service, <clears throat> sometimes people, you know, if they wanted to speak to the pastor, if it was something pastoral, he'd maybe he'd lead them back behind the 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 you know the podium and that, and take them to an office through the back, and she got up, and I've never spoken to her before, and um she'd gone up got up, and gone into the office with the pastor, and then five minutes later, the pastor came out and pointed to me and went like. And basically, he. She she was in she was she was, really, upset, and he, was say hoping that I would be able to, come up with something, some kind of encouragement for her. And um, <clears throat> it was good timing because. Uh, so the, it's because God had spoken to me. So I went to her. I said, "I said, listen," and she and she said, "She he, she said, I think God's um, finished with me now because he because he you know he he like she felt exactly you know she felt like God had abandoned her. She was just a normal you know housewife woman. She'd got herself in a state." And I said, well, listen, before you came here, before before you, you told the pastor, God already already told me that you were, you thought that he had, 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 a, had left you. And I said, so I'm here to tell you he hasn't left you. And it's all right. And, you know, you can just be restored to the way things were. And, and it, <laughs> you know, she was just like, oh. She was so relieved. I mean, she was really relieved. And it was a God thing. That's what God wanted to do. Otherwise, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have told me that. But this person, you know, that left the message, they were trying to kind of almost say, no, no, it's too late for me. And I'm thinking, well, what do you think it is that's got you on this page? I mean, it wasn't even a normal page. It was like, it was one of my little, you know, 
one minute long songs or something that I didn't get. I thought this is this does this is God. He wants he wants to help you. So he'd he's got into a situation where I think that his relationship's gone wrong and um he's just gone off the rails. You know God doesn't the point is that, you know, God doesn't have the you know for people like that, you know, it's not This isn't the same as people that should know better, that willfully sin, that are walking out. And, you know, this isn't, and, and you know, anyway, the point is, I don't know if this guy's going to see this, but I just want to read a, a, <clears throat> a scripture to you. Because this is a scripture for you, right? Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoking flax he shall not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. You know what that means? A bruised reed he shall not break. It means that when you've fallen into difficulty, through no fault of your own, and everything's gone wrong, he understands that you're weak. He understands that you, you can't help it. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, um, encourage you in your sin. He doesn't encourage anyone. He came to save us from our sins. But you know, he, he will restore you. You know, he will restore you. This is not, the same as like religious people willfully, you know, living a double life and lying and deceiving people and all these things. It's 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 a very different thing when someone's a a you know miserable broken person who just doesn't know how to get out of their mess. He he's not come. He doesn't come to crush these kind of people. That's why it says a bruised reed he shall not break. Paul Washer explains it. I can't do better than him. He says that along the the river banks in the Middle East, you know, these reeds grow. They have, they they used to the kids pick take them off and they make them used to make little flutes out of them, kind of like cane, like um, bamboo or something. Like that. They make little flutes, and then um, <clears throat> if it's not the right one and it breaks, they just throw it away, and they just get another one. The whole point is here: God doesn't do that. God doesn't just throw you away. And the same with the um, smoking flax. Apparently, like, that kind of... The, that kind of um, olive lamp, uh, oil lamp, when they start to go out, they stink. And that's what happens with us. We start to stink. Do you know what I mean? When we're going wrong. But it says, he won't, he won't snuff us out. You know, he won't, he won't quench. And um, so... You can understand, you know. We do get warned by God, but whenever I've given warnings to people, because I get words for people a lot, my warnings are people that should know better. They're for people that are puffed up and arrogant and conceited and proud. I don't get, you know, words from God to to, to somebody who's stuck in their sin and just doesn't know how to get out of it and is totally broken and totally, you know, um, beside themselves with guilt and shame and everything else. I don't get a message from God like, God's going to crush you, he's finished with you. I never get those kind of messages for those people because every valley shall be exalted and every hill shall be brought low. Do you understand? He brings down the high hills, the proud and the lofty, and he brings up the broken and the contrite. So don't give up on God because he's not giving up on you. Amen. Bless you.